Greetings, everybody. This is going to be the Ark of the Covenant, Part 3. Also, I believe we're going to be covering the Mercy Seat also. Now, the uh, Ark of the Covenant was inside a place that was covered, and it had a, a veil it was surrounded by basically like curtains but it had a veil and it was called the Holy of Holies and as I understand it on the Day of Atonement which was once a year uh, supposedly it just recently passed it was in the fall the high priest would go in with blood and uh, put it upon the uh, Mercy Seat Ark of the Covenant. You wouldn't approach that except with blood. And the, it was only one time a year, and it was only the high priest. So kind of keep that in mind. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, Ark of the Covenant real quick. I'm just going to go over this real fast because I know sometimes I start a series and then I don't do something for a couple days and probably forgotten. So, all right, Exodus 25, verse 10. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half, and this shall be, uh, shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. If you remove the O, uh, the L, and then you got God. Now the thing is, as I understand it, the gold has kind of an, a representation of the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it. And shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. Uh, let's see. Skip down to verse 16, Exodus 25, 16. And thou shalt put it, uh, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. Now remember, they put Aaron's rod that budded, the Ten Commandments, and a pot of manna. And that was in the last lesson. Verse 16. And thou shalt put the ark into the ark of uh, the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. The mercy seat. You know, this is like, <laughs> I guess this is an earthly representation of God's throne. Just remember something, people. You had to go into the tabernacle through the door, which was, you know, the only door, Christ. You had, you had to stand at the foot of the cross, the uh, sacrifice. You would wash at the laver, laver uh, you know, baptism. And then you had the lampstands, which were the uh, seven spirits of the seven churches. You had the table with showbread with the bread, the bread of life, which is Christ. And, uh, and then as you go up to the top of the cross, now you're talking the Holy of Holies and the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat, which to me, I I'm pretty sure it's a representation of the throne of God which will be the judgment seat of Christ. Now, there's a big difference between the judgment seat of Christ and the white throne judgment. The judgment seat of Christ is for the believers. The great white throne judgment is for those that are damned, if memory serves me correctly. All right, uh, six, let's see. 
And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cherubim on the one end and the other cherubim on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. Now what's a cherubim? Um, I guess that's plural for cherub. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. So yeah, cherubims is uh, plural of cherub. Verse 20. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark Thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give thee in commandment. Commandment. You know, like the Ten Commandments, right? Unto the children of Israel. All right, so, all right, let's go take a look at Ezekiel chapter 28. I guess we'll start in verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. And, uh, when you do Bible studies, it seems like 90% of the people will, uh, of these so-called Bible teachers, will tell you, see, see, he's talking about the king of Tyrus, a human being, and they'll try to explain this away. But listen to this. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, you know, and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Wow, that king of Tyrus must really be old if he was around in Eden. Okay. I mean, Ezekiel was, what, hundreds of years after, you know, so... How old was this King of Tyrus guy? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created not born, in the day that thou wast created. So this is obviously talking about an angel. And did you notice all these precious stones? Well, guess what? A lot of those are very similar to the stones that were on the breastplate, uh, the ephod of Aaron, when he did the service of the tabernacle. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. All right, so. Thou art the anointed cherub, an angel, right? that covereth. Covereth what? The throne of God. I think that the Ark of the Covenant, the two angels facing each other with their wings that covered the mercy seat, I think that's this is exactly 
the earthly representation of what was in heaven. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, not born. Thou wast perfect in the days in, the, in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Sin, evil, wickedness. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. What? They have filled the midst of thee with violence? What's up with that? Well, uh, violence. And they're talking about being up in heaven. Where do, we, where do we read about that? How about Revelation chapter 12? And we're going to go back to Ezekiel in a minute, so hold your place. Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was, past tense, my opinion, and there was war in heaven. Ah! And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ah, does that make sense now? Let's go back to Ezekiel 28. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Uh, if there was a war in heaven, isn't that violence? Oh, yeah. They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. Isn't that what happened? God cast him out of heaven? Cast him to the earth? Ezekiel 28 ties right in Revelation chapter 12. Bingo. But they don't want to read the Old Testament. That's, oh, that's for the you-know-whos. That doesn't apply to us. We're New Testament Christians. But, of course, they won't read the New Testament either because, you know, uh, you know, hey, uh, sports is on, you know. Hey, let's watch our favorite sports team and swill a beer. And we can yell at the TV set when our team gets the ball, right? Stupidity. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. I totally believe one of the two cherubs covering the mercy seat was Lucifer, or Satan and the devil, if you want. A lot of people say, well, you know, Lucifer doesn't belong in the Bible. It's it's a Latin word in the Bible. You know, this was Hebrew. Well, you know, that's fine. How about the, uh, the devil and Satan? Yeah, that's a Bible word, right? Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. How about 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. For And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into 
an angel of light. Ah, Satan's an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Back to Ezekiel 28. Do you know that in the plagues of Egypt, uh, one of the gods of Egypt was Ra, the sun god? God of the sun, the sun god. What's the sun? The sun's bright, right? I wonder if Ra was Lucifer or the devil and Satan himself. But hey, that's just my guess because, you know, just an educated guess. But still, it's, it's a guess. Ezekiel 28, 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. Revelation 12, right? I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they, sh and all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. So the Lord's going to bring a fire that's going to uh, devour this one. And what about that fire? Well, Revelation 20 and verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Uh, you ever heard of the, the term Trinity? You know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Well, here you got the unholy Trinity. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. There you go. The unholy trinity. Now, remember, the ark is called the ark of the covenant. God made, God is a God of covenants. Well, what is a covenant? It's an agreement. It's like a contract. Uh, the Lord says, I will do this if you do that. And the Lord always keeps his part of the bargain. So, what was the covenant? Well, I have a, an entire playlist on covenants of the Bible. Some of the covenants were conditional, were you do this and I'll do that. Other covenants were unconditional. For example, God made a covenant with King David that he would always have a man to sit on the throne of Israel. And then when Christ came, well, that part of the covenant was fulfilled for from that time forward till eternity. So you had conditional covenants, which is like a contract, you know. Oh, you want to buy this car from me? Okay. Uh, you give me $3,500 and I give you my 8-year-old, 10-year-old car. You know, if you don't pay me, you don't get the car. That's a conditional covenant or it's like a contract. But... So let's take a look. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and they were come to the desert of Sinai. Uh, isn't it funny? You know how you spell Sinai? 
S I N A I. Sin, artificial intelligence. Ah, I'm just throwing that out there. Don't take don't take that too serious. Uh, yeah, don't take that with a grain of salt. Bring the whole salt shaker. And we're come to the desert of Sin I A I Sinai. And had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Oh yeah, all the plagues of Egypt. Uh, water to blood, the darkness, the fire with hail. Uh, he killed the firstborn. Oh yeah. I mean, the plague of the flies, the lice, the frogs. I mean, you know. Hey, you guys saw what I did to the Egyptians. Okay? Verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. What does that mean, the Lord says, I, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself? Uh, does that mean that there was a a huge eagle like a 747 and everybody got on the wings and the eagle flew away. You know, I laugh. Well, I actually want to cry. People say, oh, well, you go to take the Bible literally. And then others say, well, you know, the Bible's all figuratively. No, sometimes it's literal. Sometimes it's figuratively. You got to know the difference. All right, eagle's wings. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you up. Uh, I bear you on eagle's wings, and brought you unto myself. Let's go back to Revelation 12. All righty, Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of... 12 stars. Now, if you go to that little, if you go click on my name and go to the home page of my channel, in the right top hand side, there's a little box with a, like, a magnifying glass. And if you type in Revelation 12, I did an entire Bible study on this chapter. All right, so Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Uh, and if you had never read the book of Genesis, you would never know who this was. This is when Joseph had a dream The sun and the moon, the sun was his father, and the moon was his mother, and the crown of 12 stars were the, his, uh, the 12 tribes. And I do that uh, connection in that Bible study on Revelation 12. Verse 2. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having ten, seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now this is, you know, obviously this is the devil and the stars are the angels, but that's not the... Uh, that's not the purpose of this Bible study. Uh, read Job 38 if you want to know 
what stars are. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And I'm sure this is reference to Mary and Christ. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Okay. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Now this is the church. The end time church. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days or about 42 months. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, pre and prevailed not neither was her place found any more in heaven. So, yeah, I know we just read it, but... And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Ah, Genesis 3. What was the serpent that was talking to Eve? Well, the Bible tells you right here, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused, which accused them before our God day and night. See, the devil is an accuser. He accuses the brethren. Accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him, who? The church. Overcame him, the devil. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives Unto the death. Somebody tell the pre-tribbers, oh, that's right. They don't think, they think this is only for the you-know-whos. That We're the church. That doesn't apply to us. Yeah, that's the kind of moronic idiocy that uh, they come up with. That's why dispensational theology is from the pit of hell. You know, when you start slicing the Bible up into time periods, well, this applies to the church. This applies to the you-know-whos. That does not apply to the church. That's for the other guy. You know, it's no wonder nothing makes sense to them. I don't know if they're deceived or deceivers. I don't know. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The you-know-whos are, are not going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb because they don't believe the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Listen to this. And the woman, the church, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Wait a minute, didn't we just read that in Exodus uh, uh, 19 and verse 4? Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Yeah, we just, wow, we just read that, huh? Yeah. 
Revelation 12, verse 14, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Ah, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war, war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, you can have the testimony of Jesus, but if you don't keep his commandments, well, what can I tell you? Or if you keep the commandments, but you don't have Jesus Christ, what good is that? And by the way, we're not talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about the Two Commandments. But, but Bob, what, what do you mean the Two Commandments? You know, the Two Commandments, yeah. I know I've beaten this horse to death, but, you know, someone asked Jesus what was the most important commandment in the law. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-six, 36, he said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I uh, didn't read anything about keeping the Sabbath or uh, washing of pots and pans or saying a certain name a certain way, Yaha, Hoshua, or whatever. Now, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And hopefully you don't have a bunch of Satanists as your neighbor. I know, I've said it a thousand times, but I'll probably say it a thousand more times. So what was the covenant? The covenant was the keeping of the commandments. At least in the Old Testament, it was the Ten Commandments. You know, that's what was the Ark of the Covenant. Aaron's rod that budded, which was God proving that, you know, the rod that did all the miracles, and no, it wasn't a magic wand. You know, it was God's way of showing that he was God of gods and Lord of lords and King of kings. And I'm doing all these miracles to show you that I am more powerful than all the gods of Egypt. That's what he did with all the plagues. It was a challenge to all of uh, Egypt's gods. Satan, the sun, uh, probably the Ra, the sun god, the angel of light. Egypt had darkness for three days and three nights. Why couldn't Ra, the sun god, break through the darkness? Because he has no light in him. And then the manna. The manna was representat uh, representation of the bread from heaven, which was be the body of Christ. And then you had the Ten Commandments, the tablets of stone, the Ark of the Covenant. All right, so what, is, what did the Lord say? Oh, let's go back to Exodus 19, verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Verse 5. Now therefore, if, I, F, a big if, you know, if uh, goes along with those buts, but if, or if but, and no, we're not talking about goats. Well, maybe we are talking about goats. We, if you want to turn on the uh, religious television channel, you're talking about goats. But, uh, you know, everybody always says, well, if or but. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, 
and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And the people answered him and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. Liar, liar, pants on fire. All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they said, but they wouldn't do. And if you want to know the interpretation for the moon and the stars, and the, uh, you can take a look at uh, Genesis chapter 37, read it for yourself, and that'll tell you, you know, that'll uh, explain that to you. Or I've got a Revelation chapter 12 revealed. So, so in Exodus 31, it says the tabernacle, uh, 31 verse 7, Exodus 31 7, it says the tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony, the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is thereupon and all the furniture of the tabernacle. So it's the ark of the covenant, the ark of the testimony, uh, because it'll testify either of good or evil against the children of Israel, whether they keep the Lord's covenant or if they don't. Now remember in Exodus 19.5, the Lord said, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 14, it says, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Uh, cut yourselves. Uh, have you ever heard of people that were uh, slit their wrists or made cuttings into their flesh? Uh, with some kind of a satanic ritual, the shed, you know, they, they spill their blood. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 26, uh, the prophets of Baal, Baal, um, you know, the false god of Satanism, uh, they, uh, Elijah made a challenge to them. He said, you serve your god and I'll serve my god and the god that answers by fire that's the real God. So let's read 1 Kings 18.26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal, or Baal, from morning until, even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no vor, no, no vor, no, oh boy. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. Boy, what a show that must have been, huh? And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Boy, I can relate to that. I love mocking. Yeah. And said, cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth. Uh, yeah, you're God. You know, you better speak louder. Speak louder, because he might be sleeping. You got to wake him up. Peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and, and listened, listened carefully. And they cried aloud and cut themselves. Ah, they cut themselves, just like what we just read in Deuteronomy, right? And cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Ah, so, 
Yeah. So Deuteronomy 14.2, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. Deuteronomy 26.18, And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. Psalms 135, verse 4, For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. How about the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1? Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone... Now remember, the Bible says, and that rock was Christ. Of course, the Catholics want to tell you that the rock was Peter. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, as much as I like Peter and respect him, uh, he's not the rock. You know, Christ is the rock. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up and uh, built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Now who's the cornerstone? Christ, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. But ye are a chosen generation. Boy, there's people that absolutely hate the idea of a chosen people. Unless, of course, it's the Antichrist over in the Middle East. Then they love the idea of it being a chosen people. Well, they can be the, the Antichrist that deny Jesus. They can be the chosen people. But God forbid that Christians are. Oh, they have a conniption fit. Well, I don't even know what conniption fit means. But, you know, they, they have one. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Isn't that just what we read in Exodus and Deuteronomy and Exodus? A peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Ah. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at Jeremiah 3, 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now, Josiah was a good king. He was king of Judah, he was a good king. I hope one day I'm worthy to meet him. Uh, the Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, 
Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Now remember, Israel and Judah were two different kingdoms, two different land areas, two different peoples, two different kings, two different kingdoms. They even had wars against each other. I, you know, everybody says, oh, well, Jew, that means all of Israel. No, it doesn't. Sorry, Charlie, only the best tuna gets to be star-kissed. And if you remember that commercial, you're old. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain, and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. What's a harlot? It's a whore. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, but she returned not. Quit being a whore to Satan. Come back to me, the Lord's what's basically saying here. Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. God divorced Israel, but yet she was more justified than Judah. Now, why did the Lord divorce Israel, but not Judah? Because the Lord had made a promise to King David that there would always be a man to sit upon his throne. And this covenant was made in 1 Kings 9, 5. And this is an unconditional covenant. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. And of course, when Christ came, um, he was to be the last, he will be the last ruler upon the throne of Israel. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. New covenant, not a renewed covenant like the Hebrew roots people try to con us with. And I honestly, I think most of them are deceivers. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now remember, God divorced Israel, remember? I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Did you know that God led Israel Israel by the hand out of Egypt? Which my covenant they break. God didn't break the covenant. Oh, and when you hear these deceivers say, well, God made a covenant with the uh, you-know-whos, and he God doesn't break his covenant. Well, that's true. God doesn't break his covenant. But they did. Read it again. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land, uh, out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, which my covenant they break, 
That's right. God doesn't break his covenant. They broke the covenant. Which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Isn't the church called a bride? Ah, the people that God divorced in the Old Testament is he's the peop, same people he's going to make a new covenant with in Jeremiah 31. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the, when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. In other words, as long as you got the sun in the sky and the, and the moon and the stars, God's promise will never fail. Bingo. All right, let's go to Hosea. Chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read the whole chapter. And uh, Hosea is one of those books just before the New Testament starts. Uh, it's toward the end of the Old Testament. It's what's considered one of those minor prophets. Uh, not because the message is of minor importance, but rather it was considered minor in size. Uh, you know, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, those are considered major prophets because they're major in size. All right. Hosea chapter 1. And I, I think I did a commentary on Hosea, if anybody's interested. Um I got well over a thousand Bible studies. I, I can't even remember all the stuff that I've done in the past. Must be Alzheimer's setting in. I'm getting old. When you can remember the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, you're old. Uh, Hosea 1.1, 1, 1, the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Rehoboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. See, that tells you right there. Kings of Judah, king of Israel. They're not the same. You know, they're idiots. Well, no, they're not idiots. They're deceivers. Everybody tells you, oh, well, you know, Jews, that's it. That's, they're all 12 tribes. No, they're not. They're lucky if they're even one tribe. Well, maybe not lucky, but blessed. Blessed. Verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the, Lord hath, uh, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. See, in a sense, Hosea was like the Lord, and he was told to take a wife of whoredom, which is kind of like the Lord being married to Israel, right? And children of whoredom. All the children were whores too, like mother, like daughter, like, you know, you get the idea? Verse 3. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Now, remember, the, uh, the Assyrians came in and took Israel into captivity uh, years, I think a couple hundred years before uh, Judah was taken into captivity in Babylon. 
So that's what this is referring to. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. What do you mean break the bow? Well, if you've got a bow and arrow and your bow's broken, how can you fight? It's like running out of bullets. You got a rifle, but you don't have any bullets. What good is a rifle? Well, it's a club. But what good's a broken bow? You know? Verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loru Hama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Oh, yeah. They're going to go to Assyria, to the Assyrian Empire, and they're going to be scattered. I'm going to take them, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lord Yuhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people. You know, in the new, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew, all the, uh, well, maybe not all, but many of the Hebrew names had meanings. Yeah, like Adam. The word Adam is actually a racial description, believe it or not. But if you read the new lexicons, they totally get rid of that uh that word, those words that, you know, the racial description, they get rid of it. They just say, oh, Adam, the first man. Well, yeah, he was, but I had a Strong's Concordance from the 18, uh, 1980s, and it had a different thing. The new ones remove the racial description of what Adam was. Adam was descriptive of a certain group of people who were known for printing Bibles, building churches, and being known as Christians. And no, we're not talking about China. We're not talking about India. We're not talking about Africa. And we're not talking about South America. No. No, we're talking about Europe. Europeans printed the Bibles. Europeans built the churches. Europe was known as the Christian nations to a greater or lesser degree in periods of history. So, then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. And where is this place? Jerusalem. Prophets always made their prophecies in Jerusalem. Are the Jews like the sand of the sea? The number of the children of Israel, are they like the sand of the sea? They're the 1% people. They say that there's uh, between around 18 to 20 something million Jews in the world. And yet there's, uh, what is it, uh, like 7.5 billion people? That's 750, uh, 7,500 million people in the world. And the Jews are, what, 20 million maybe? They are indeed the 1%. Are they like the sand of the sea? No. No, they're not. 
Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, Christ, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. How about Hosea chapter 2, verse 21? And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Let's read Romans 9, and we'll close this out. And uh, I guess there's going to be a part four, because I'm not finished yet. We've already done an hour, so Romans 9, verse 1. Now keep this Hosea in mind. I'll, well, we're going to get to it. Romans 9, verse 1. Yeah, yeah, these, this is the guy that the uh, Hebrew Roots people hate, Paul. Oh, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Where did he go? He went to Rome. He went to Greece. Uh, wow. He went to all, all those areas and uh, considered Europe, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the people that printed the Bibles, the people that built the churches. Romans 9.1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Now remember, he's talking to the Rome, to the Romans here. Obviously not all the Romans, but some of the Romans. Verse 4, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the covenants, and the giving of the law. Who was given the law? Moses. And the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now remember, Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. God said he would bless Ishmael, but he said he Isaac was going to be the chosen was to be the uh, the chosen seed. But in Isaac shall thy name be called. Not Ishmael. Not Ishmael. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and not Esau. Not Esau. Verse 9. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. Oh boy, there's that word election. Oh boy, the Baptist churches hate that word. 
election. Guess what? When there's an election, the people pick. When God has an election, God makes a pick. He makes a choice. For the children being not yet born, having neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Who was the elder? Esau. Who was the younger? Jacob. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What? Uh, what uh, my, my, my pastor says God loves everybody. Well, I suggest you read Malachi chapter 1. Malachi? I've never heard of Malachi. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the last book before the, the, of the Old Testament. It's the, the book before Matthew. Read Matthew. Before you read Matthew, you should read Malachi chapter 1 said, God loved Jacob and he hated Esau. And if you don't know why, go to my playlist and look up The Angels That Sinned. About six hours later of study and you'll know exactly why Esau was hated. He threw away he threw away everything by marrying a satanic Canaanite, Hittite, human fallen angel hybrid. But Bob, the Bible says that angels can't have sex. No, no, it doesn't say that. The Bible says that in the resurrection we will be like the angels. There's neither marriage nor giving a marriage. We will be like the angels in heaven. Uh, oh, what? In heaven? Yeah, remember? There was war in heaven, and Satan and his angels were cast out. The dragon and his angels were cast out. Not all the angels are in heaven, people. They're not in heaven. They're down here making trouble for me. A lot of trouble for me. And probably a lot of you, too. Verse 12, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth. Tell that to the whosoever will crowd. So then it, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. I have no idea why the Lord would show me any mercy at all absolutely no idea I've done so much evil and wickedness in my life I mean half jokingly I was voted one of the most likely to go to hell in high school seriously well I'm I'm half joking so then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of God that showeth mercy for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose has I, have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Remember the Bible said that God, uh, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart? Verse 19, Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? 
Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter, potter, hath not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endureth with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he hath afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And that word Gentiles is the same word that they translate as nations. Verse 25, think about the book of Hosea that we just read. Listen carefully. As he saith also in Osi, that's the Greek rendering for the word Hosea. As he hath said also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. I will call them my people, which were not my people. Why? Because in Jeremiah 3, he divorced them. And her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth have left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma, Sodoma, and and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness hath obtained a righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? That's right. Your righteousness is in faith in Christ, people. Verse 31, But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There you go, people. Remember, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Testimony. And we're going to do the, the uh, mercy seat in the last study after this. So I guess this is the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.